sorry it's been a while work has been especially frustrating and I've needed to focus and should have been doing this wish there was a way to do this full time but you know it's how it goes I've done videos on this uh, an, an in-depth study that's from my uh, my teacher at ichthus.com describing specifically the the geopolitical layout of the world um, right before the inception of the actual tribulation itself and um, it's actually mentioned a couple of different places Daniel 7 specifically I actually just told somebody Daniel 8 but I'm tired and brain's not working but I'm gonna try this anyway in Daniel 7 there's a vision of four beasts the final beast is crazed with iron teeth that crushes and destroys everything. And although it's not explicitly mentioned, you'll read a lot of commentary that essentially shows that that fourth beast is the same thing as the seven-headed, ten-horned beast in Revelation. And although it's not explicitly the exact same picture, both beasts have ten horns. Um, specifically in Daniel's vision, though, we get this picture of a, a tiny horn that kind of grows up um, and uproots or, or overthrows or casts down depending on the translation that you read three of the horns in Revelation 12 you have this seven headed beast that has ten horns that in one picture has seven crowns on the seven heads but then a verse or two later it has ten crowns and the crowns are distributed on each horn it's very, it's very on, it's, it's intentional. Both of these pictures, they're describing the expansion of the Antichrist kingdom as Satan goes throughout his thesis, counter thesis battle back and forth that he uses to fool the masses to conglomerate the world power wise, power structure under Antichrist. The, the, the story is this, and I'll, I'll put the other videos, um, in the description here so if you guys want to go see the the very deep nitty-gritty where I break down all the verses involved you should see it anyway I put it in this channel for a very good reason it's so that you guys can have a really in-depth it's painfully in-depth sometimes but it's very very good study but the gist is this and I'll try and make this short it's hard to make it too short but Roman in and of itself in its heyday back like during the time of Paul or John, when John wrote the book of Revelation, expanded essentially, not perfectly, but essentially over the entirety of the European continent. It involved the Middle Near East, a tiny bit of Asia, and the bulk majority of Northern Africa. <clears throat> if we look at the geopolitical layout of the world today, we see that obviously the Middle East Northern Africa, for the most part, is controlled by Islamic nations. I recently discussed this in another video, maybe a week or two ago at this point. It's one of my more recent videos, talking about the King of the South. In Daniel 11, the King of the South, who was originally represented by Antiochus Epiphanes, or Antiochus Epiphanes, depending on how you want to say it, is also bouncing back and forth between that original story of Antiochus comparing it to the soon-to-come stern-faced king, Daniel 8 there, talking about Antichrist again, and how he will essentially reenact this war between the North and the South, him being the king of the North, and the king of the South being um, supported by the three kingdoms of the South, and in our day would be represented by Islamic nations. I talked about in that video how that king of the South is likely what the uh, Islamic faith calls the Mahdi. In other words, their, their version of a military type Jesus. Um, he doesn't actually come and pay for sin. He just goes to war against the Christians and Jews. And in, in the Quran, he wins, which, sorry guys, that's not going to happen. But what this points to, and, and, and this is part of the reason too, why in any of my other videos where I, I will, I will essentially call politics Satan's game almost exclusively is because well, you, you guys know what it's like. If you've ever voted before, if you've ever considered the leadership structure of any nation, really, it's it's never a decision between good and bad. It's always a bad or worst. 
uh, uh, you know, the, the better of two evils is essentially, and, and we joke about it and, and we, we've been conditioned over and over again to assume that just because the worst is avoided, that somehow the bad isn't being controlled by Satan. But, you know, it's just like the analogy of the, the frog being boiled slowly in the pot to the point of it dying and becoming dinner. That's us. And we have been conditioned throughout the, the, the last six millennia here on earth since Adam and Eve to basically accept whatever not so bad option is put in front of us. Well, in this case, there's a bunch of different reasons why this conglomeration of powers and these 10 kingdoms, these 10 horns all come together in the end. But the picture of the beasts, both in Daniel 8 and 7 and Revelation 12, is essentially showing that these 10 centers of power, these 10 nations, their whole existence is to basically do Satan's bidding and eventually turn over all power and prestige to Antichrist based upon this false notion that he has this quote-unquote righteous crusade that he is going to enact against the king of the south. And, and Daniel 11 alludes to it quite explicitly that the three kings that support the king of the south essentially turn him over. They allow for his death. They, they do pump up the people that are in their nations to follow him, specifically so as to have faith in him, but once he dies, the whole goal there is, and I think it's clear on its face, correct me if I'm wrong, but the whole goal is to get them to abandon their Mahdi, their, their Islam, follow the Antichrist and join whatever crazy religion and nonsense he's going to foist upon the world. Because about the time that the King of the South falls, you are looking right about the inception of the Great Tribulation, the second half, the death of the two witnesses, the session of Antichrist, his putative uh, assassination and, and resuscitation, right? I'll get into that more specifically in another video, discuss it a little bit more in depth. But the whole point is, just the same way you and I have been bred to see, you know, that one's bad, but that one's worse, so eh, we'll take it. Satan is going to use the relativist, you know, seemingly um, adept, uh, likely highly intelligent, highly attractive, all these things, all the things that Antichrist is going to, on, on, on the face of it, represent to the world. He's going to use this whole false crusade, this false notion um, that the king of the south, the, the Mahdi, which I'm certain he's going to call the Antichrist, um, to conglomerate these kingdoms. So instead of just having those seven original heads in Rome, and, and I'm, I'm fairly certain, by the way, that one of those heads specifically, because remember, it's the head that has the wound that, you know, came back to life. One of those heads will be represented by Israel, specifically led in the person of Antichrist, um, but then adds those, those three kings. Um, and they're also represented, by the way, in the statue of Nebuchadnezzar's dream with the, the, the ten toes, seven iron, uh, three clay, you know, and how they don't really mix, but they end up all being part of one kingdom in the very end, at the very bottom of the statue, and then eventually the, the rock, which is Christ, comes out of eternity and destroys them. That's the picture. It's, it's, it's in my opinion, clear. And they're all talking about the exact same thing. They're talking about the fact that, you know, these three southern nations will eventually be subsumed, specifically because their leaders are already on the side of Satan, and as, as I'll mention, when, when, if, if you guys decide to check out these links to this other video, my teacher is under the impression that all of these leaders are going to rise first in Europe and then in the South, or likely all at the same time, A, will come before Antichrist, and B, will likely be, potentially anyhow, Nephilim, in other words, engendered, um, genetically modified human beings by Satan's perhaps highest generals. And this is, this is a real possibility. They could also just be exceptionally evil human beings that perhaps explicitly worship Satan and are all in on this evil plan together from the beginning, just based upon that notion alone. That's totally possible. You know, they could be demon possessed. There's, there's a number of different ways uh, that could explain, a, a number of different ways they could come about that would explain the consistency and the, um, the cooperation, the seemingly seamless cooperation between them, because again, remember, uh, on the on the beast's heads, especially the seven, uh, is is going to be written the name, the blasphemous name, likely in the Greek Christos, which is 
calling essentially the nations all together will call the antichrist christ so all of these 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 nations and horns and whatnot all these centers of power the ones with the diadems on them the crowns um they their full and and total job is to give antichrist power and they were set up from the beginning and this also goes further to the point that i've been recently making that it points more and more towards antichrist being what would be called you know putatively conservative uh, on the world scale because yes what we're seeing like with the wf and 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 all the i don't need to get into all the stuff that's happening right now you guys know the socioeconomic nonsense the covid takeover you know the the transgender craziness you know we're starting to see a counterculture rise against that right this is the first pride month that i've seen actually have some legitimate pushback and when i say legitimate i mean sizable enough that you and i can see it we can see it represented in our stock market we can see it like i'm i'm seeing things change a little bit at my local target you know i'm not seeing bud light everywhere i'm not a drinker but i you know things like that we're, we're starting to see a counter flow of culture and if you guys are aware of what's going on in the world scene too you'll also know that most of europe was allowed to have a massive amount of not only syrian refugees but refugee refugees economic refugees not actually people from war-torn countries basically led um to think that they could just walk into europe um get free welfare which by you know being fair technically based upon the rules that these ridiculous leaders over in europe set up these people are just taking advantage of laws and rules that were set up likely against the people's will or if it was the people's will they were foolish enough to buy into the idea that just giving away a bunch of free stuff wasn't going to invite riffraff which of course it did we're seeing all types of interpersonal violence between the two different people and again if we look back at that statue of daniel with the clay toes and the steel not never ever never being able to mix culturally speaking the people from the middle east and you know and the african populations and then the european populations they're all so culturally different it totally makes sense that you're going to see this kind of incursion happen throughout right and 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 i don't think anybody's on the side of right by the way if they're not faithful and they're not like truly following the lord so it's not that I have pity on them, it's just that all of this was set up specifically so as to give these seven initial heads and then three additional horns, so a total of ten horns, um, power and capability to rise. I think the ones in the south will rise because of the nonsense going on in the west that they're against. And if we're being honest, Islam hates us already for a number of reasons, not just our LGBT flags. Um, you know, the fact that here in Babylon, the United States, we've been waging war against them seemingly unrighteously for quite some time uh, and 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 they're resentful right so this has all been building this has all been this has all been coming to a specific peak so as to bring these people to power so what i'm getting at is we should be keeping our eyes open for a series of leaders to take over the majority of the large nations throughout europe um, likely initially at least including israel that um, are all conservative again i air quotes because they're not truly conservative they're satanist and evil and totally against you but we should all see them get together we should all see them starting to agree we should all see them starting to create their own social movements in their own countries that are likely going to be backed by the bulk majority of the people that are there just because they're tired of all the they're tired of the outcome the the reasonable outcome of all the nonsense that's been happening because these cultures just don't mix the 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 laws that were put in place essentially were exploitable to a great degree and this is all a setup by the way again bad choice worst choice they always chose the bad choice instead of the seemingly worst choice all while slowly having the heat turned up to the point to which they can't take it anymore and this is satan's point this is the reason for all of the leftward nonsense the wef the trans the the COVID, all these things they're all designed to slowly strangle us to the point to where we freak out and take any worldly answer that will be given to us that will seemingly potentially anyway at least show us an end a potential end when really all it's doing is it's setting everybody up to a be more and more rel relativist before it's over b get used to wanting a strong man and then wanting an extremely strong man when whatever incursion happens before the start of the tribulation because there has to be something that tips it off and i'm sure the seven-year treaty between israel the uh I mean, it's, it's essentially, it has to be theft, right? Because the Temple Mount is owned by Jordan, an Islamic nation. It, it has to essentially be theft on the part of modern day Israel to get the Temple Mount, but the Temple has to exist for the tribulation to, to, to even like go on, right? 
And uh, there has to be the temple, right? There has to be the two witnesses on the temple mount. There has to be all these things going on. So it only stands to reason that once we start seeing these seven rise, we'll know that the Antichrist is getting near. I talked about a lot of different scriptures. I'm sorry I didn't name them off because I, there's, just, there's just so many. But Daniel 7, Daniel 8, uh, Daniel 11 especially, they all talk about these things. I think it's Daniel 4 or 5. I can't remember. I'm, I'm tired. I'm sorry. But the, the, the vision of Nebuchadnezzar's uh, statue, the dream, where it eventually gets destroyed by the rock, which is Christ. All of those are all talking about the exact same end times monster that is led by Antichrist and, and by extension, his father, the devil. And uh, it's all coming. It's, it's coming to a, to a new station near you very soon. Keep your eyes open. Um, we're likely going to see a lot of cultural shifts in that regard, too. We're likely to see the news start, again, air quotes, telling the truth um, and, and getting on the side of reason so as to get the people to shift in mass. Because, you know, the, the, the leftward, godless, atheist side, they're very controllable based upon their feelings because they all fear for their lives on a regular basis. So to get them to switch over to see what, again, putatively we call conservative is not that big of a stretch, especially after what happened during 9-11 with George Bush. And that guy was a, he was a major screw up. And in my opinion, an evil Satanist, just like the rest of them. So there's a really good chance that not only will we see a shift like that from the left to loving the right, we're going to see a major shift because again, whatever, whatever occurs aside from the seven year treaty that's signed is going to cause such en en enmity between the seven northern nations, uh, Babylon, United States, and those three kings, that it will be undeniable as to what's going on. Plus, if we see three major leaders in the South and seven major leaders in Europe all rallying to opposition causes that the United States gets behind the northern side of things, you know the time is drawing near. I can't, I, th there's no actual explicit timeline on these things other than they exist basically from the beginning of the tribulation all the way on, but it very much stands to reason that they will be in power not, not, not too long before the tribulation starts. So just the same way we're likely to see some action regarding the Temple Mount and you know, maybe some terroristic activities that I, again, I, I won't put my finger on because again, I'm not a prophet, but it just stands to reason that these things are going to be used again so as to get everybody's hair on the back of their neck standing up and ready to fight. And it will give Antichrist his crusade and all of these 10 kingdoms will bow to him. And anyway, just wanted to put this out there. I, I will do everything I can to remember to put those, uh, those links in here. You guys need to know this stuff. You need to know where Babylon is. We are the West. We are Katim. We are United States. We are the queen of nations right now. And we are so arrogant. We think there's nobody else like us. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about that because these are things that we need to go over and we need to be mindful and we need to be aware. Obviously we need to be sober. We don't need to be running around like a chicken with our head cut off, but Keep your eyes open, people. This stuff is soon to come. Anyway, um, yeah. I hope you guys are having an all right time. Please pray for me. This has been an incredibly tough time. I um, I don't want to sound desperate, but even while working, things have become exceedingly rough. And, and, and I know I'm not the only one suffering right now. The few folks that I do actually get a, a, an idea about how their lives are going, you know, if they're, if they're doing okay financially, they're not doing well as far as perhaps their health or their interpersonal lives. Uh, and if they are doing well in their health, you know, their, their finances are a wreck. Some of them, it's both. Um, I pray for all of you guys. I hope you're doing well. Sorry for going on so long. I try to keep these short, but this is a pretty hefty topic that I think we need to be sober and aware of. Also, please see the video recently about the uh, King of the South. It's, it's, it's a, it's not that I think that that's the exact guy. I just think that the way he's being set up, he very well could be because again, there has to be a certain amount of extreme popularity behind these people for them to get to that position in the first place. So anyhow, bless you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, share with your friends, things are getting tight and um, I pray you are all doing well and uh, I hope you're actually getting to enjoy a summer. It was, seemed like winter lasted forever and now it's, eternal spring it's just it's, it's weird this year that also seems on purpose anyway guys love you talk to you soon